Hey guys, welcome to our weekly news show here on Backstage with Millionaires. I'm Caleb, your host, and today we're going to be talking about the latest news that's been happening in India's startup ecosystem over the course of the last week. Specifically, we're going to be talking about the third and largest ban wave of Chinese apps here in India, Kate's push for a probe into Chinese-funded startups, Reliance Retail's massive acquisition, the launch of Flipkart's wholesale business, all of the latest funding news, including Unacademy's very exciting milestone, and more coming up right after this. All right, so first up in the news, after another border clash, India has banned an additional 118 Chinese apps in its third wave of bans. Now, out of these 118 banned apps, the one that's creating the most buzz right now is PUBG Mobile. While India only accounted for 1.5% of PUBG's global revenue, it had 50 million users in the country, making it one of PUBG's biggest markets. Now, just to be clear, PUBG in its original form was actually a computer game, and it was created by an Irish game developer named Brendan Green. However, after the game's popularity exploded, he decided to team up with China's Tencent Games to launch the mobile version. And it's this mobile version that's been banned in India. Now, soon after the ban happened, Prime Minister Narendra Modi's website's Twitter account was hacked, which led many people to believe that the hack was committed by Indian PUBG players who were upset about the ban. So now there's a bunch of Indian PUBG mobile players who are wondering what game to play next. And while there are a ton of Battle Royale games out there, one that's really polished and quite popular over in the United States is Fortnite. Now, Fortnite Mobile hasn't really picked up the same way that PUBG Mobile did here in India. But one thing to keep in mind in case you're planning on switching over to Fortnite from PUBG is that Tencent owns a 40% stake in Epic Games, which is the company that developed Fortnite. Now, you might be thinking, what games can I play without supporting Tencent? But the reality of the situation is that Tencent Games by revenue is the largest game company in the world. And so you might have a hard time finding games that Tencent doesn't have a hand in. Even Call of Duty Mobile, which is another highly polished and great battle royale game, was actually developed by a subsidiary of Tencent. So things are not looking good for Indian mobile gamers right now. Even if you switch over to another game, there's no guarantee that it won't be banned in the future. That being said though, I see this as a huge opportunity for Indian gaming startups. The ban of PUBG and other popular mobile gaming apps that were developed or published by Chinese companies has left a massive space that could potentially be filled by Indian games. So we're gonna move on to the next news item in just a second, but before we do, if you're not already subscribed, now would be a great time to do so. We post new videos every single week about Indian startups, entrepreneurs, and the latest news. Also, go check us out on Instagram because we post news items there every single day. And we're also going to be hosting some live interviews with Indian entrepreneurs in the coming weeks and months. All right, next up in the news, but continuing to talk about the situation between India and China, the Confederation of All India Traders, or CATE for short, has written a letter to the Commerce and Industry Minister, Piyush Goyal, urging the government to probe Chinese investment into 141 prominent Indian startups. The traders' body wants the the government to determine the investment and control Chinese investors have over these Indian startups. They believe that it could be a planned move from China to acquire the data of Indian people in an effort to influence India's economy. And considering the fact that these startups operate across all of India's major sectors like hospitality, IT, logistics, food delivery, digital payments, e-commerce, healthcare, and insurance, such a probe might be a good idea. I mean, it's always better to be safe than sorry, right? All right, next up in the news, Reliance Retail, which is a subsidiary of Reliance Industries, has acquired the retail, wholesale, logistics, and warehousing business of Kishore Biani's Future Group in a deal worth 24,713 crore rupees, or $3.36 billion. With this acquisition, Reliance Retail has gained access to 18,000 Future Group stores across India. These include popular chains like Big Bazaar and FBB, Easy Day, and Central, which are spread out across 420 cities across the country. Now, Reliance Retail was already India's largest retail chain, but now they own 30% of the market. And that's a market estimated to be worth 6.5 lakh crore rupees, or $89 billion. And that's just the retail side of things. Like I mentioned earlier, Reliance Retail has also acquired Future Group's warehousing, wholesale, and logistics business too. Specifically talking about warehousing, this is 
is going to increase Reliance's warehousing space by 80% to 18.2 million square feet. All right, next up in the news, Flipkart has officially launched its B2B e-commerce marketplace, Flipkart Wholesale, in Delhi, Gurgaon, and Bangalore. Now, the ultimate goal of Flipkart Wholesale is to become a one-stop shop for India's businesses. And it essentially works in the same way that Udan does, connecting local manufacturers with retailers. With this platform, Flipkart is looking to organize India's B2B marketplace by providing end-to-end -end support for India's small businesses and Kirana shops so that they can grow. Currently, the platform is only offering products across categories like fashion, apparel, and footwear. But by the end of this year, they're looking to expand into categories like grocery, home, and kitchen. And they're also going to be offering their services in 20 new cities. Now, according to a Red Sea report, India's B2B market is only worth about $1.7 billion right now. But it's estimated to grow at an 80% CAGR to reach a market size of $60 billion by 2025. And besides Flipkart Wholesale, the only real major players in this space are Udan and India Mart. So this looks like a great opportunity for Flipkart, which is certainly going to benefit from Walmart's years of experience in the e-commerce space. All right, moving on to some funding news now. Online learning platform Unacademy has raised $150 million. That's 1,100 crore rupees from SoftBank, Facebook, Bloom Ventures, Nexus Venture Partners, General Atlantic, and Sequoia Capital. With this funding round, Unacademy is now India's second edtech unicorn with a valuation of $1.45 billion or 10,650 crore rupees. Earlier this year, the company was last valued at $400 million that's 2,940 crore rupees, which means that it's seen a 3x jump in its valuation in the last six months alone. Through its platform, Unacademy helps students to crack competitive exams to get into colleges and secure government jobs. Today, they have more than 30 million students, that's three crore students on their platform, and 350 of them, that's 3.5 lakh of them, are paid subscribers. With the way that the edtech segment is growing in India, Unacademy is eyeing a bigger piece of the market and has already acquired four edtech startups including Creatrix, Codechef, PrepLadder, and Mastery all in the last six months. Unacademy had said earlier that it's looking to make more strategic acquisitions to grow inorganically, and this funding will help the company to grow and expand into different markets. All right, next up in the funding news, hyperlocal delivery startup Dunzo is all set to raise $28 million in its ongoing Series E round. The company has already raised $15.65 million from Google and L. GT Lightstone. The remaining $28 million are going to be coming from existing investors like Lightbox, 3L Capital, Moving Capital, Pivot Ventures, and Boruka Finance Corporation. Founded by Kabir Biswas in 2014, Dunzo is a hyper-local delivery platform which allows users to order anything from their neighborhood stores across multiple categories like groceries, pet supplies, medicines, and gifts. On top of that, Dunzo will also pick up and deliver anything from one place to another within the city on your behalf. Half. At the moment, Dunzo services are only available in eight Indian cities. That being said, the lockdowns and pandemic have been a massive blessing for Dunzo, as the company is now doing 4x more business than it was before COVID-19. The startup is hoping to become completely profitable in the next two years. All right, next up in the funding news, home design and renovation platform LiveSpace has raised $90 million, that's 660 crore rupees from Goldman Sachs, Caris Capital, Venturi Partners, Singapore EDBI, Peugeot Group's holding company FFP, Inca Investments, TPG Growth, UCRNT, and Bessemer Ventures. Founded by Ramakan Sharma and Anuj Srivastava in 2015, LiveSpace offers a complete interior decoration platform where consumers can book a free consultation with an interior designer and discuss designs and layouts to get a quote. Once satisfied, they can then book the designer who will work closely with the customer to bring their designs to life. The company has more than 1,500 designers who have helped design homes for more than 20,000 customers across 15 cities in India. With these latest funds, the company is looking to expand into new markets like Australia, Malaysia, Indonesia, and the Middle East. It's also looking to expand its presence in India by reaching more cities like Kolkata, Lucknow, and Ahmedabad. All right, next up in the funding news, edtech startup Eruditas has raised $113 million, that's 830 crore rupees from Sequoia Capital, Leeds Illuminate, Pro 
Process Ventures, the Chan Zuckerberg Initiative, and Ved Capital. Founded by Ashwan Damira and Chaitanya Kalipadnapu in 2010, Eruditis partners with top global universities to offer executive level courses. They have tie ups with more than 30 top tier universities like MIT, Harvard, Columbia, Cambridge, and Wharton, offering over 100 courses to students across 80 countries. Their courses can cost anywhere between $5,000 and $40,000, that's between 3.67 lakh and 30 lakh, and more than 50,000 students have enrolled in the last 12 months alone. The company is going to be using these fresh funds to tie up with even more universities and expand their presence into emerging markets. They're also going to be using some of the funds to develop career-focused courses to help students to thrive in the post-pandemic world. All right, that is all the startup news that I have for you guys this week. I really hope that you enjoyed the video. And if you did, make sure to hit the like button and also subscribe if you haven't already. You can also hit the bell icon if you want to be notified every single time we post a new video. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode of Backstage with Millionaires, and I will see you in the next one.